hi there welcome to my channel on today's episode we're going to be doing the part three of my immigration series we've done part one where i told you guys my experience i told you about the psw and the reality of the part two was with safina we spoke about becoming an, a doctor as an international medical student from any country but we're precisely talking about nigeria and then this third episode is going to be featuring my friend julie julie came some 10 years ago to the country sometime in october basically we came to do masters she was in another university and everything but oh more her story is the most horrific story i've ever heard the most heroic story i've ever heard a story of resilience a story of hard work persistence there's nothing you won't grab from that girl's story from being detained to her daughter losing her british passport crazy 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 experience so today i don't know the strength she used to go through this process i asked her in the video at some point and she's like stephanie uh, there was nothing i was going home to so i had to continue i think she also got some courage from the person who was in the cell she even related the cell to a prison literally like the detending room or whatever i think she got some confidence from that person like this girl had to report for four years every day to hmrc they almost deported her from you know but she knew her rights i think the girl had schooled her already on her rights and stuff like that anywho let me not talk too much about this let's go and then enjoy this video please subscribe to my channel if you haven't Just click the thumb up button not right now if you have if you haven't yet Hi, Julie. Hi. Okay, then. So, you're going to just tell us your story. Okay, first of all, congratulations on getting your stay, your resident permit in the UK. You got the family member one, right? Of a British citizen as a partner, parent. Or... When did you come to the UK? Like, what year? In, um, in 2010. Okay. For what did you come for? Um, I, came, I came to do um, for my master's. Okay. Yeah, and um, I finished in 2012. Okay, what did you study in school? English systems and business management. Okay, where was your uni? University of Bedfordshire. Okay, in Luton. Luton, yeah. And that was like the year before the PSW was cancelled, Abby. It was. So did you come in January or September? I came, I actually came in October. October. Oh. Because um, I was supposed to be in September, but at the time mommy, my visa wasn't out mommy, there. So mommy, the school came. Mommy, today is December today. It is December, yes. Wait. So my school um, gave me a letter, and apparently they had um, a, a session. Our class was starting in October. Okay. So I, they kind of gave me an extension letter to give to the. Um, you, to add to my application. Okay, okay. Yeah, so I. What, 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 let me see. No, it was in November set actually, because I came in October and I had to wait till November. November. But I ended oh. up graduating in March of 2012. Okay, which was perfect because it expired April, I think April 2nd or something. Okay, so you got the PhD. I applied for the post study visa, which um, expired in 2014. After 2014, I made another application, but that one got refused. Okay. Yeah. Um, before it got refused, um, they invited me for an interview. But oh. for some reason, um, they ended up detaining me. Oh. Was it like financial? Was it a financial problem or? No, it was um an error with my application i think it was oh. an error with my application so um because because of the application i made yeah they had to they said they were in um convinced okay with the evidence i gave them yeah because at the time my visa had already run out all right so they ended up detaining me. Okay, so it was just like you're illegal when they're okay. I get that, I get that, I get that. So, and because um, my visa had run out as well um, at that time, um, they couldn't leave me, even though um, I was entitled to appeal the case. Yeah. Right, so they decided that um, they were going to return me to Nigeria. Whoa. Yeah, so um, I had to fight the case, um, go a lawyer involved, and all that. 
so then he ended up um, stopping the injection, uh, having getting an injection to stop the plant okay. from leaving. Yeah, wow. So after stopping that, they had to had to have another court case where um, they had to bail me out now. Yeah. But in order for them to release me out on bail, they had to give me some conditions where I had to like report to the home office. Okay. <laughs> Every week. Every week or the yeah, to report to the Home Office. So I reported to the Home Office from 2014 to 2019. While I was Five years. That, you were going there every week. Yes. Were you ever scared that one time you just get there and they'll just carry you to Nigeria or something like? Oh, you know, me, I'm not even going to lie you. It was dreadful. Yeah. Going there, it's like going into the lion's den. Every, every week, I tell you. Wow. You don't know what's going uh, But while um, that was going on in 2015, Zara came into the picture. Okay. But uh, so when Zara came into the picture, I had to change my application now. Okay. So a family member application. So okay. I made the first one. So Zara came into the picture. We had to do the normal registration, get a visa for her, um, get her passport. The passport, yeah. Yeah, but... Um, after we got her passport, we made an application for me. Okay. That application got refused again. Based on what? On what basis? Based on the said that I wasn't qualified for the application I made. <laughs> Are you kidding? It was. Uh, I don't know why I made the application. Looking back now, it was yeah. only, So I made my application um, on that EEA. Okay. Which it wasn't supposed to be because Zara is a British citizen. Okay. So I should have made the application. Just as a parent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay. I so I had to make another one. But while I was making the application, yeah. I got a letter so I get down this. I got a letter one day telling me that my child's British passport had been cancelled. Whoa. <laughs> Jesus. Are you kidding? <laughs> And this was so, in like 2005, Abby. No, 17. 2006. 16. It can't be 6 now. 16. <laughs> was it? No, what is 16? No, 2017. 17, I heard. 2017, I got, I got that um, letter. Yeah. So that one, I felt like I was going to die. Die, like, like seriously. Like, you know? <laughs> I have to worry about myself. Yourself, I tell you. Worry about a child as well. Was it appealable? Yeah, so um the girl I had after they did that, I had the option of um naturalizing her. Um the reason why they refused my application was because at the time I had Zara, I was still legally married to someone okay yes and so Zara's citizenship was based on me and okay 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 oh. and, uh, um, British yeah her citizenship will be based on me why because because she is a product of she's not a product of the marriage oh right Wow, okay. So even if her father was British, just because you were yeah. married, it was a problem for her. Well, just because I was married, you were legally you know, yeah. even though the marriage we were not together, yeah. her citizenship was still based, based on, on you. Oh wow, I didn't even know that part at all. Okay, patient. okay. So after that, in order for her to now be recognized as a British citizen, I had to naturalize her. What does that mean? So. Naturalizing is like um, registering the person now as a British citizen. Okay, okay, just out of view on her own. Okay. That's her dad. So That's her dad. Her dad, her dad um, yeah. Had to do the naturalization thing. How how long did that how long did that take? What did you say? How long did that take the process of naturalization? Ah, oh, I think it took like four months. Okay. Four months. Four months. Yeah. Okay. So we did the naturalization, um, the naturali naturalization certificate eventually came out. 
after it came out, we had to now apply for our British passport. Okay. So after we applied for the British passport, that one came out. Now, after how long that, did that one take? I the passport. Do my own application. The passport. How long did it take? As in, I know the the naturalization took four months. Then the passport was it was it long? No, uh, I remember. No, it wasn't. I think it okay. was like, like about a month. Okay. 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 So it was after that when uh, I made my own application. Yeah. And this was twenty eighteen, I guess. <laughs> no, no, no. This no. My application was actually quick. My oh, nice. Was this year? It took, I, I made my application uh, the last week of, Octo of October. Wow. <laughs> and this is December, December second of month. After the application, I had to go to the home office okay. for my biometric. Okay. I went for my biometric on the 4th of November. Yeah. And my visa came out like about two, two weeks after. Try imagine you just got that five years. Abi, how many years? <laughs> you put that five years. I, I couldn't believe it. As I a traumatic experience, yeah. I, you know, I, I remember that day um, I was on the train that morning, mm. and I just went onto my phone and I saw a message. Jai, after and you already used to stress safe with these things. So I can imagine you not even waiting, expecting the thing to come this year. Oh, I, I, when, I, when I opened the email, I saw something like, oh, something, 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 you know, uh, <laughs> it said your biometric um, resident permit. Yeah, we'll be doing Jesus. <laughs> hey, uh, okay. You know, I read it again, read it again, read it again. <laughs> Yeah. I wasn't sure what was happening. Yeah. So, after some time, went back to the email, read it again, mm. just to be sure that I think they've given me the, I think they're saying that they've given mm. me the gratification. And when it eventually dawned on me, yeah. that was what they were telling me, yeah. I started crying on the train. Yeah. Oh, you need to cry, I think. Jay, let me say oh. that people have gone through things. You're the highest <laughs> gone through things I've heard ever in this visa thing. Okay, so, that process wasn't easy. Yeah. You know, sleepless nights, crying every day. What would you even yeah, say kept you going after that people. after that first rejection? Like what kept you going? Like why like how come in one day you not just say in fact let me be going? I guess you say becoming stronger, but I mean like that first time, how did you still keep pushing? Uh, so I no, I remember I was in detention for one month. Wow, were they feeding you? Huh? I said, were they feeding you? Like, how was that experience? That place is like being in prison, if I'm honest. Wow. Did you have like a roommate so, or something? I had a roommate, a Jamaican lady. Okay. They were like one of the. You know, after the, she's been there for years. So oh, I wow. think after a while, she, I would call her, I would say she's one of like the pastors of the fellowship. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So, so I had that one the, while I was in there. Obviously, I was trying to get out. Yeah. Dealing with like Zara's father was in the picture. You know, so many things were going on. But I looked at it this way. Yeah. I know where I'm coming from. Yes. I know. I know that going back to honesty is not an option. For yeah. Me. I have to fight this and I have to fight it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. so I knew I, that was part of the reason why I had to like say, you know what, if I had if there's an option for this you induction, take uh, induction to be stopped, it had to be stopped. Even if I had to go back to Nigeria, it cannot be that I'm being deported. Yes, yes. For my, the world, That's how doing masters, I tell you. Yeah. When you do yes. still. Yeah. So, uh, after that one worked, and I had to be doing the whole every week reporting. Reporting, yeah. I just had to push on Stephanie because there's nothing back home for me. Yeah. I know for me and everything, but honestly, there wasn't anything back home for me. What am I, there wasn't anything for me to fall back yeah. to. Yeah. What will you tell yourself when you get it? Why didn't you just do? Why didn't you? I can't imagine. I can imagine the last process, sure. And I knew that it was only 
only going to take a while. It's only as, um, well, I would just say I was fortunate. Yeah. Oh, God bless me. Yeah. There was a child picture, really. Yeah, exactly. I just had to push on. It's not a case of only me now. I have yeah. a child. Yes, I mean, yes. Exactly. Back for me. Then That's I have true. another child to think about now. It wasn't, going home wasn't an option wasn't an for option. Me. It wasn't an option at all. Okay, so when you, when you told your parents, like, how did they react? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, even before that, I remember yeah. every time it got to a point where I, it's not that I was being, um, it got to a point where I honestly would not take a call from my parents oh. because every time they call me, they're like, oh, how's your application going? Yeah, going and you don't want to be telling them the truth about it, yeah. to be honest, because that's just them just carrying want... unnecessary burden. No, I don't want to do it. Yeah. So sometimes I won't take their calls. Yeah, yeah. Or if I and they want to start, I say, you know what, I just called you to know how you do it. So, yeah. I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, when yeah. Some... But Hi. I'll let you know. <laughs> Yeah. So when I eventually told them, they couldn't believe it, but they were happy for me. But did you tell them like what you went through or you're just still keeping that gist till, <laughs> till the day you yeah, see? Keeping that gist. You should suddenly write a book, you know. Huh? I said you should write a book, oh. Uh, I'm telling you, just talk to one of these writers. <laughs> the story is too deep. <laughs> or maybe when you renew this one. Which will ob obviously be automatic because, you know, maybe you'll still be yeah. kicking that fine. Yeah. yeah. It's worth, yeah. like, every day, different parts of the story that are just too strong and too deep. It's I worth did. people hearing, as in, Chai. Just like, a story of yeah. persistence and <laughs> something, something. It Resilience. Was the worst five years of my life, but I'm just grateful that but it's yeah, over. It's over. Like, I'm it's over. About anymore. Exactly. And then there's still Zara. Oh, that's too much. Yeah, thank you so much for your time. Once I finish editing it, I'll send you um, a copy just so that you see how you know everything looks up before I publish it. Um, where's Zara? Let's say bye bye to her. <laughs> She's sleeping bye, already. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye, Zara. Darling girl, say bye bye. Bye. <laughs> She wants to go and play. <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Julio. I really appreciate. Thanks for having me on your um, on your show. Yeah, please tell them to subscribe so that they will them to become British. <laughs> Just tell them to subscribe or a like. If you drop a comment or whatever, just tell them to subscribe, Sha. Oh, I will. I will definitely. No, I say say it. Say it to the camera. Subscribe to this. Um, my Metro Gypsy. You have to subscribe to her. Yeah. And you probably might be a British citizen if you do. <laughs> <laughs> All right, yeah. Thank you so much. Have a good night. All right. Yeah, cheers. Bye. Bye. All is well that ends well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Feel free to ask any questions. Ask me any questions. Put the questions in the comment section. Julie would answer you. If there's any part of her process that you want to understand more, she would answer you. Nine years later, we have a stay. We are legal. Like, I'm so happy for that girl. I told her to write a book. I'm sure you'd have heard me. Anyway, subscribe and click the thumb up button if you haven't. Drop a comment because I love to read from you. See you on the next episode. Bye-bye.